<laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever tried this Oculus thing. It's, it is, I think Facebook bought this company a while ago. I don't remember, but anyway, they, they, it's a, the three-dimensional thing. I tried these three-dimensional headsets years ago, and they sucked. They were very pixelated. It just didn't look real. This thing, whew, I mean, 150 bucks. 150 bucks. This thing's amazing. My son bought this, and I just thought, yeah, yeah, try it like I'm hooked. Everybody's been in my office just going, you got this little controller and you know, wah, 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 shooting, shooting stuff. All right. What are we doing? <clears throat> it's not 3D. Okay. Um, what's the missing 1%? Oh boy. This comes from Katen in Redding, California. Hi, Paul. I love listening to your podcast. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. A lot of people just watch the videos, but I don't know, a couple thousand people listen to these videos uh, via uh, the podcast called Ohm's Law. Uh, I enjoy hearing how people got to where they are now and what they learned along the way. When you mentioned your book, 99% True, almost a national bestseller, on a podcast, I had to buy it and read it for myself. Why, thank you, sir. I thoroughly enjoyed reading your book and did not want it to end. Aw, nothing, nothing makes an author's heart feel better than that. However, uh, here's, here, here's the caveat. When I was done with your book, I had one question. Why did you call it 99% true? Does it mean that 1% of what you wrote is not true? Am I missing something? Thanks, said Clayton. <laughs> or Kayton, sorry. Well, yeah, this book. I, I don't know how many, how many pages are in this thing. Um, 300 and something. 357, I don't know, three... 300 something pages in there. It's, God, how, do I, how do I say this? It's all true. Some of it may be a little exaggerated and some of it, much of it under, what's the opposite of exaggerated? Underplayed? I, I actually like to think of it this way. 99% true is is my, you know, it talks about how we started the company, uh, my troubles, you know, going to jail and getting all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's, and, and, and Kate knows. I mean, there's a lot in here that people go, oh my God, you're lucky to have gotten out of there alive. And then it goes into in more interesting stuff like business. But I, I would say that 99% was left out of the book, right? A person's life, I'm 71 years old and I've had a hell of a life. I mean, I really have. I, the things that I've done and gone through, you have no idea. You could probably fit 20 other people's lives into just, you know. Yeah, I'm really blessed and fortunate to have had such a life. So I'll tell you the, the, the history behind the, the name. So I was originally going to call it Confessions of an Audiophile, which I, I still, I kind of wish I had stuck with that. It, it, it was a great, it was a great name because that more closely identified what the book was about. And, and there are a lot of confessions in there, my, my multiple failings, and then, you know, how I picked myself up and on and on and on. All true. All of it true. And I was thinking that perhaps because of the life lessons in this book, and there are a number of them that apply not just to audio, I wanted to reach a broader audience. I just thought that what I had been through, how I described those things, was something that a lot of people could benefit from that aren't audiophiles. So I went to my friend Seth Godin, and Seth Godin, if you don't know who he is, just, just Google Seth. Seth is a very famous guy, and he and I are buddies, and he's an audiophile and just a, just a generous, wonderful human being. And I told Seth, you know, here's the name, and he, now his advice was, 
don't try and go for a bigger audience. Just stick with the people that you know, and, and you'll, you know, in, in hindsight, of course, Seth was right, but that's okay. I was determined to hit a broader audience. So I said, come up, you know, can you help me come up with some names? And he said, tell me, you know, more about the book. He had read it, and liked it. And, and we talked about what was important and all that. And he said, well, I know that you didn't include your entire life in this book. I know it because I know a lot about you that a lot of people don't know because we've been friends for how many years, right? So he said, so the book isn't entirely true. And I said, yeah, well, you know, yeah, it didn't include everything. And he's, so he came up with a bunch of names. One of them was 99% true. So it was a little bit funny and just a little bit edgy. And I really liked the, <clears throat> sorry, I, I liked the name. I thought it was good. And, and it, was, it gave me a good chuckle, a good laugh. And that's how it came to be called that. So you're missing 99% of my life reading that 1% of it that's in the book called 99% true. But what's in there is, is true and real. It's a little bit as, you know, has been overly fluffed up, if you will, uh, and, and, and exaggerated within the, the scope of things. But most of it is all underplayed. So just imagine that when you read that book and you go, holy crap, are you kidding me? This is underplayed? <laughs> it's amazing I ever even survived. Anyway, all right. Thanks for the question, Caton. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.